Good morning, everyone. Um, today's video is going to be a little longer, um, and this is actually more for um, my writer friends or any readers who really want to learn more about um, the process of writing. I've talked about fast drafting quite a few times, um, but I keep getting more and more um, authors contacting me, asking me how um, I fast draft and what what is the secret. Um, and the reason for that is because I've kind of gotten down to a system that allows me to typically write a book in four days, um, which is just, it's crazy to me because um, when I first started writing, I'd write maybe a chapter to a chapter and a half a day, and that was it. Um, I looked at people who did NaNoWriMo, and I didn't understand how they could possibly write a book in a month. Um, and I remember the first time I wrote a book in a month and a half, and I was so proud of myself because that was the fastest I had ever drafted a book. So coming from somebody who used to not fast draft and think that it was completely impossible to write a book in a month, um, I'm telling you, you can absolutely fast draft. You just have to teach yourself how to do it. So I've learned how to do that and I've gotten myself into such a system that now this is just what works for me. Um, I'm not saying that my system is going to work for you. It might not. Um, this is just what works for me. And since so many people keep asking me for tips, I'm going to share more in depth um, how I do this. So from start to finish, how I manage to get um, in some cases, 20,000 words written in a day. Um, that's pretty much um, what I can accomplish when my daughter is gone from, that I write from 7.30 in the morning until about five o'clock at night, um, sometimes four o'clock, um, it, it just depends. But that's pretty much my, my typical work day is 7.30 in the morning until anywhere between four and five. So um, just so you could see what I'm working with. Okay, so I'm gonna start right from the beginning um, and I'm gonna go straight through and I'm gonna give you my tips for each step. So the very first thing that I always make sure I do, and this is extremely important, I never set myself up to start a book toward the end of a week or unless I know I have a chunk of days. And I always allow myself a chunk of five days, um, even though, like I said, um, I've written the quickest I've ever written a book was three and a half days. Um, typically four is comfortable for me, but I always allow five. Um, because you never know what's going to happen. Life happens. So I'm going to allow five days, which means I need a full work week, Monday through Friday. I'm never going to start on a Thursday or a Friday. Um, if my daughter has off from school on that Monday, I am not going to start a book that week because now I'm only starting with four days. So I have to have a chunk of five days. Um, yes, I've broken that rule before. Sometimes you have to um, because I'm an editor and sometimes with my client edits, I can't follow this rule. But this is the one that I try to do whenever possible. I try to get my myself a chunk of five days. Okay, so that's the first thing that I do. The second thing that I do is I come up with my title. And the reason for that is I'm terrible at titles. Um, I have written entire books and had no clue what to title them before and struggled and struggled to come up with something that works. So I always do my titles first now. It's step one. I have to have a title um, and then I will write a story to fit that title. So um, it becomes a little easier when I write series because titles tend to fit certain patterns um, from the first book. Though I was laughing with um, my cover designer, hi Allie if you're watching, <laughs> um, because sometimes authors like to set themselves up with this, what we think is like the most brilliant title for book one and then we forget that we need to then make every other book in the series fit that kind of title formula. So for instance, um, the first book in the Piper series is um, a vision a day keeps the killer away. So my thought was, I'm going to take, you know, common sayings, these idioms, and I'm going to change them. So that way they have something referencing her being psychic and something referencing some sort of crime, whether it's murder, kidnapping, whatever. So I thought this was great. So, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. A vision a day keeps the killer away. What I didn't realize was I now have to do this for every single book, and I just wrote book 10. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> there are a lot of idioms out there, but it is not easy to change them to have a word that references a psychic and a word that references some sort of crime. It's really hard. Um, I have a list of over 150 idioms that I wrote down that I'm still trying to come up with ways to change these. And I ask um, my daughter for help all the time because she's a writer too um, for ideas of, hey, how can I change this and, and make this fit my series? It's tough. So that's one of the reasons why I come up with the title first. Um, my dog is behind me making noise. Hadley, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. Um, once I have my title, the next thing that I'm going to do 
is probably the last thing most authors do. And that's write the blurb, you know, the part that shows up on the back of a book, um, which I should really have a book here and I don't. So I'm just going to grab one, which is actually from my Madison Kramer series because it's the most uh, readily available. So I'm going to write this before I start writing my book. And there is a reason why I'm going to write it ahead of time. And I'll tell you that reason right now. I think why authors struggle so much with writing the back cover blurb or synopsis, whatever you want to call it, is because we fully know everything that happens in the story once it's written. We know all the little details. And to be honest with you, they have no place on this back cover. It, you don't want to give those little details. It's going to give away your story. So when I'm trying to brainstorm what my book is going to be about, I want to know this before I start. I want to know the overall arc. What is my story about? So, you know, think about it. When you tell somebody about a movie, you give them the overall idea of what it's going to be about if you're trying to get them to watch this movie with you. Same thing with a book. If you're recommending a book, you're giving them the overall idea. So that's what I want to know before I go into writing a book. So I write this blurb first. So now I know my title. I know my blurb. All right. So I know the main point of what my book is. Okay. Once I have that, I move to something that I always do by hand. I have a notebook for every single series I write. So this is my Piper series. You can see I wrote it on the little star there. Um, this is for my secret series. So yes, I, it does not have anything on the cover because it is coming out very soon, guys. Um, the prequel is coming out extremely soon, so I'm so excited, but I'm not going to tell you yet. So I have notebooks. And the first thing that I do in my notebooks is the very beginning is always my cheat sheet. Okay, and if you write series, this is extremely important because I'm balancing two different series, which means two different sets of characters, two different settings. Um, it's a lot of information that I have to remember from one book to the next. It's too much, guys. Like, we're human. You can't expect yourself to remember all of that. So what I do is in the front of every single book, and I'll show you Piper's. Um, not that you're going to be able to read it on my screen, but just to, to show you what I do here. I went and took tons of notes on psychometry because Piper's a psychometrist, which means she can read the energy off of objects. So the very first page here is, these are all of my notes about psychometry and the things that Piper can do, okay? And I have pages of notes here on Piper and her abilities and what she can do. I also have major things about her, what her apartment looks like, what her office looks like, because those are things that I'm gonna be talking about from book to book. Um, and I don't wanna have to go back and flip through a book like this to find a scene and figure out how I. I described something. It, I don't have time to do that when I'm drafting. So I have my little cheat sheets here. It tells me exactly what her apartment looks like. I know exactly what Mitchell's apartment looks like. All of those things. What kind of cars they drive. Those little details that we tend to forget but readers always remember. Um, and if we mess them up, they're going to let us know. So that's my cheat sheet. Okay. Once I have that, and really you only have to do that at the start of a series, with the exception of this, if I'm writing a new book and somebody moves or somebody gets divorced or something changes, I need to update my cheat sheet so that I know it changed and I always write down what book it changed in as well. Okay, so there's a little tip for that. Okay, once I have that done, I'm going to open up to a clean page. Okay, I write the title of my book and now I'm going to start taking notes. Okay. Um, and when I say notes, this is the major things that I know have to happen in this book. I do not go chapter by chapter. The only time I ever do that is if I get stuck when I'm writing. Um, so we'll come back to that later. But I'm going to write the major things that I need to know are going to happen in the story. So for example, I write cozy mystery. So I need to come up with a list of suspects and why they're suspects. What, what are their motives? Um, you know, how could they possibly have pulled off this crime? Those things that I know Piper is going to come across along the way. What objects is Piper going to read on this case? Because that's also important to my story. It's all the major points that I need to talk about in this book. And that way I can check them off. And that way I know I've gotten through everything by the time my draft is finished. So my cheat sheet has character information, setting information, um, anything that I need to refer to later on, and then major points that I need to touch on in the book. Once I have that, and if you're wondering why I'm looking, I have notes over here. <laughs> um, once I have that, I am almost ready to write. The last thing that I need is any research that I think I'm going to need to do for this book, I try to do beforehand, before I even start drafting, because I don't want to stop writing once I start, all right? Inevitably, 
I'm going to have to. At some point, I'm going to come across something that I didn't realize I was going to put in this book and I need to research. You know, there's police procedures, even though Piper is um, a PI, not a police officer. Mitchell is. So there are little things that I need to know. Um, you know, I, I like to make my search engine look like um, a psychotic killer, apparently, because, <laughs> I, you know, I'm looking up ways to kill people, basically, because that's what I write about. Um, I try to research as much as possible ahead of time and take notes so that way when I get to that point in the story, I have my information that I can reference and I can just write, okay? Um, all right, once I have that, this next step is extremely important. I'm ready to write. And when I'm ready to write, I have to turn off all social media. Um, I do not go on social media while I'm writing. Um, I see so many writers who it's like, I'm, I should be writing right now and they're on Facebook. I won't go on it. I will go silent. Um, if you notice this week, I didn't come on uh, Facebook on Wednesday to do a live, even though I always come on on Wednesdays because I was busy writing. Um, if you go and look at my Instagram feed, it's like blank for this week because I was busy writing. Um, yeah, I don't do it. I tend to ignore people. Um, my husband even knows he'll call up and he'll start talking to me and he'll hear me typing and he'll go, okay, I guess you're writing. I'll talk to you later. Um, people need to know this is what you're doing. It's your job. It is a job. Whether you have another job or not, writing is a job um, and you have to treat it that way. So when it's your time to write, that's your time to write. It's not social media time. It's not time to talk on the phone. Of course, emergencies happen and that's an exception. Um, I will have my email up in that is the only thing that I will have up. And if it's not an email from my daughter who needs something at school, I'm not gonna even read the emails. It's just, I check for that and that's it. So get off social media, turn it off, okay? All right, now I am ready to start writing, all right? Um, if you're like me, the beginning of a book is pretty easy because you're excited, it's a new story and that's always exciting. So that's not the trouble. Day one is usually a breeze for me. I will look up and I'll be like, oh my goodness, it's one o'clock. What happened to the entire morning? I haven't eaten anything yet. Um, it, it's just, I get into a groove and I start writing. Now, one of the tips is this. Once you start writing, do not read what you have written. Just keep writing, okay? Don't go back, don't self-edit, just, keep moving forward. Um, if you see a little squiggly line that you spelled something wrong, who cares? You will get that in revisions. Just keep going. Okay, so that's my tip. I find that the more you write, the more you get into a groove and the words just start to flow and it comes much more easily. All right. Um, let's see. If I do get stuck, and this typically happens on day two because that's <laughs> toward the end of day two, I'm hitting the, the middle point of my book, you know, the saggy middle as we call it. Um, and when I get stuck, I will just jump ahead to something else that I know is going to happen. And a lot of times I have no clue where my characters are going to be when a certain conversation takes place. I just know that conversation is going to take place in the book. So I will literally just write talking heads, which is when you write the dialogue and there is no narration, nothing is happening but the characters speaking. And the reason why I do that is because I don't know what to fill in at that point. Cause like I said, I don't know where that conversation is going to take place. What they're going to be doing. Um, are they going to be in Piper's office? Are they going to be on a crime scene? I don't know. Um, so I just write the dialogue. And then once I go back and I fill in all of those gaps and I get to that point and I know where they are, I'll go in and fill in the narration then. That's the only time I'm going to read through something that I've already written, okay, is when I've jumped ahead and now I need to make that part that I wrote earlier fit in with where I currently am in my book, okay? So that's the only time that I'm giving myself permission to do that. Okay, um, if you really, really get stuck and you don't know what to write, um, and I typically do this when I hit the saggy middle and I'm like, everything was going so well and now I feel like I'm pulling teeth to get words. That's when I jump ahead to the conflict, or not the conflict, um, the climax of the story. Because that's the most exciting part of your story. When Piper confronts the killer, that's like I get so excited to write that section and I'm gonna write that when I'm feeling awful because these words are like just not coming to me and it's really hard sorry my voice is like I'm fighting I'm still fighting congestion here when writing gets hard I jump to the um, climax because that's gonna get me all excited again okay so I will do that um, another trick if it gets hard and I've done this so many times I can't even count is write the ending just jump ahead to the end of the book. How do you want the book to end? And why I find that really helpful is because if I know how a book is going to end, I have a point I know I need to get to and I know 
um, what I need to do to get the characters to that point to make that ending plausible. So it gives me a clear point to write to, and it also gives me um, clues as to what I need to write in order to get there. How, what do I have to do to get Piper in that situation or whatever character I'm writing at the time? So I find that really helpful as well. Okay. Um, when you do have to stop writing, like if it's the end of the day, I need to go pick up my daughter. Here's a little trick for you. Because I said you never want to go back and reread what you've already done. And I used to do this all the time. When I first started writing, I would reread what I wrote the previous day before I started writing anything new. I don't know what I was thinking, guys. Do you know how much time that takes? This is why I couldn't write more than a chapter or a chapter and a half a day. Because I took up most of my time rereading what I'd already done. You don't need to do that. I literally will put my cap locks on and I will write myself a one sentence. This is what you need to write next. It's literally just telling me what scene is coming up, where I left off, so that I don't have to go back and read what I wrote. So it's like a little cheat in there. I write myself notes in my books all the time. So that way I don't have to go back and read. Hadley, stop. Um, it's so helpful because when I sit down in the morning, I see that line and I automatically know what I'm going to start writing that day. It's never stare at the blank screen because I've already told myself, when you sit down, you're going to write this. And I find that so, so helpful. So um, that's something that you want to do. I'm so sorry. I'm like so congested and I feel like my voice sounds really funny. Okay. Let's see. Um, I think that's that's pretty much, that's what I do um, and every day. So like I said, you sit down in the morning and other than that first day, which I don't find to be a problem because a new book's always exciting, um, you know what you're gonna sit down and write. Um, and yeah, that's how I do it. So um, by that point, you know, at the end of four or five days, you know, my book is finished and then I put it away for a while. I don't wanna look at it for a while and move on to something else, so. Okay, that's my tips for fast drafting. In a nutshell, um, you wanna make sure you have a chunk of days. Don't set yourself up for failure. I never, ever um, wanna be writing on a weekend because I'm too busy, my family's home, it's chaotic. I know I'm not gonna get many words in or much time to write, so I always set myself up for a Monday when I have a full week that I know I can write. Next, I come up with my title. After that, I'm gonna write this back cover blurb so I know the overall story arc and what I want to happen in the book. Um, from there I go to my notebook and I make myself that cheat sheet with all the important information that I need to know um, in my book and then the major things that have to happen in my story. Um, I do my research beforehand, that also goes in here. Um, and then I start writing and I do whatever I need to to make sure that I keep writing, whether I have to jump ahead to a future scene, it doesn't matter, I just have to make sure that I keep writing while I am in this chair. <laughs> um, so that's it. Um, I did say I was going to go back and talk about something and I totally forgot what that was. Um, it just came to me when I was reiterating this and now I forgot it again. <laughs> That's pretty sad. Um, this actually, th this is a downside. I do want to give you a heads up on this. Aw, oh, thank you so much. Um, I used to be a teacher. <laughs> so I actually do like teaching, but, um, yeah. Um, Okay, so there is a downside to fast drafting like this, and it's funny because this is something my daughter said to me just this week. She came home from school, and we were having a conversation, and she just stopped and looked at me, and she went, I think you wrote too much today. And uh, what she means is when I write like 20,000 words in a day, I get to the point where my brain just like shuts off and words don't make sense to me anymore. So I'll start talking and I'll be using the wrong words, like completely wrong words. And my daughter just laughs at me because it's like, I'm like, yeah, my, my brain's done. I need to turn it off for the day. So that is a downside to doing this. I do want to point that out because that might happen to you. It happens to me all the time. All right. Um, what on earth did I say I was going to go back and talk about? I can't remember right now. I'm looking at my notes here. Um... Yeah, I really don't remember. So <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments if you're watching this um, what I said I was going to go back and talk about. And I'll add that to the comments because I I just can't remember. Um, I, I know it had something to do with this notebook. And oh, yes, I do remember. OK, if you really, really get stuck and this has happened to me, it happened to me on Tuesday. Tuesday was like a rough day um, and a rough day for me. I wrote 16,000 words. So. Yeah, it felt like I was pulling teeth for every single one of those words. And what I needed to do was get off of the computer. Whenever I get really stuck, I leave the computer because I find that writing by hand actually 
taps into those, you know, creative juices and I can think better that way. So I will then go to my notebook and I will plot out the chapters that I have left in the book. I need this to happen in this chapter, then this needs to happen, then this needs to happen. And basically you have a roadmap at that point so that you can keep writing the rest of the book. So that's my tip for you. If you get stuck, write by hand, write yourself little notes, just brainstorm what needs to go on for the rest of this book, write down those ideas and then go back to the computer because at that point you know what you need to write so um, I find that really helpful to write by hand um, whenever you get stuck all right so I hope that helps um, for those of you who want to try fast drafting or are fast drafting but want to get faster um, but like I said these are things that work for me I'm sure they won't work for everybody but I used to be a really slow writer um, really slow I wasn't sure how anybody could do this and now here I am doing it so I just wanted to share what works for me in the hopes that it might work for some of you too so hopefully you found that helpful um, have a wonderful weekend and I will see you back here on Monday and happy writing